weather fans, this is Dr. Ryan Trushel with your tropical update for September 27th. There are no active systems in the tropics today, but there is a potentially significant risk to the U.S. brewing near the Lesser Antilles. DEFCON has increased to four in all regions due to this potential threat. There's only one game in town in the Atlantic today, and it's going to be tying everyone in knots for the next 10 days, so let's get right to it. Invest 97L is located in the tropical Atlantic, several hundred miles east of the Windward Islands. The system is on the verge of being upgraded to a tropical depression, which could happen as soon as this evening. 97L will likely become Tropical Storm Matthew by early Thursday, as it crosses the islands and enters the Caribbean, continuing westward. The storm will be likely dealing with some dry air and modest shear for the next two to three days, so short-term intensification is unlikely to be rapid. However, by the end of the week, the environment in the Caribbean looks to be favorable for strengthening, which is when the games truly begin. 97L will be in a low shear environment to the south of western Atlantic ridging, and it is likely to intensify to a hurricane over the weekend in the central Caribbean. However, beyond five days, there is massive uncertainty in both track and intensity. The main sources of this uncertainty include when and where 97L actually develops, potential for disruptive land interaction with Hispaniola and other islands, how quickly a cutoff flow moves out of the Ohio Valley in five to seven days, and whether or not that system is eventually replaced by southeastern U.S. ridging. When you add that up, it's not hard to understand why there is a notable split between the GFS ensembles, which mostly favor taking uh, Matthew North in, in the Caribbean and then up the East Coast or out to sea, and the Euro ensemble tracks, which generally stair step Matthew towards southern Florida or the Gulf due to a stronger southeast ridge in the middle of next week. Because the threat to the U.S. coastline is still 10 to 12 days away, and this system has not even developed yet, model solutions really have very little skill and are only capable of telling us a range of some possible outcomes. Not all possible outcomes, mind you, but some. This is doubly true in a complex steering pattern like the one over the Western Atlantic in the next two weeks. In situations like this, it's beneficial to turn to the historical record of hurricane landfalls to get a sense of what our base case of landfall risk should be. Basically, once we get into October, aside from an overall decline in the frequency of landfalls relative to September, there are certain parts of the country that are also very infrequently impacted by hurricanes. For instance, the last October hurricane to make landfall north of Cape Hatteras happened in 1894, and Texas has only recorded two October landfalls since 1900. Rather, the historical October hurricane landfalls are concentrated in Florida, especially southern Florida. You can see that there are about 20 such events since 1900, most of which approach the state from the south or the southwest. In general, this means that I am skeptical at this point of any other model solution other than an eventual out-to-sea track, or one that eventually targets southern Florida. Rare events are rare for a reason, and remember when you're looking at some particularly sensational model run this week that extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Anyway, it's going to be a long couple weeks, so keep it right here at Weather Tiger for your daily updates and forecasts for 97L slash Matthew McHurricane. Trademark me! Patent pending! Anyway, now you know what's happening in the tropics. Keep watching the skies.